food is indeed the language of love. This one, she likes you. She likes your la lechonera, my friend. La lechonera is the spark of love. Your spark of love is powerful. Powerful indeed, my friend. La lechonera, the original mojo criollo, obey the pig. For 25 years, Conference USA student athletes have set new standards of success. Our history includes those who are beyond competitors on the field, beyond champions in the classroom, and beyond heroes in their communities. We call them Hall of Famers. The Conference USA Hall of Fame class of 2019. Their legacies live on. To find out more about the inaugural class, visit conferenceusa.com. Mental health affects us all, whether you finish first or last. Whether you win or lose. The stigma around these issues causes those around us to suffer in silence. Mental health is nothing to be ashamed of. You are not alone. You are not alone. As a student athlete. As a teammate. As a friend. We pledge to continue the conversation. Because it matters. Because you matter. Stand up to the stigma. Stand up. Stand up. Continue the conversation. You are not alone. Well, a new week is here, and the outlook for the next 13 days is clear. Two opportunities to get the wins needed to go bowling for a third consecutive year. The wins and losses of past weeks have set this stage, where regardless of the outcome, late November is the time to come out and perform. This upcoming Saturday, unique, a game that formidable foe, a trip down 8th Street, the Palmetto, and a Miller Drive away. This matchup in a setting that might elicit familiar vibes driving in for many. Your familiar Monday morning routine is back on a Facebook Live link near you. Panther Talk Live at the GC returns today. AJ Ricketts, Butch Davis, glad to be here in the pit once more. It's been a couple of weeks. Coach, yeah, it's been it great to be back with you once again after I mean, I had a basketball road trip, had a bye week, but we're back here at the GC. And, you know, I, I feel those late season bye weeks may perhaps be a little bit more advantageous. You got more guys typically nicked up, so good timing for that as yeah. we prepare prepare for a pretty big game this weekend. Yeah, it really did kind of come at a good time, AJ, because yeah. obviously uh, over the crunch time in the middle of the season, you got that stretch of six games in a row. You get a lot of guys nicked up and yeah. the guys are having to suck it up to try to play. Uh, you know, so it was. Last week was a good opportunity for our guys to get a lot of treatment, a lot of rehab, uh, try to get themselves in a position to where they're healthy enough to be able to grind out uh, through the remainder of the season. Yeah. Hey, did you survive that cold snap this past <laughs> weekend, this cold hey, front? Oh, my just, gosh. Yeah, let me just say. <laughs> <laughs> Tara, we just had winter, okay? We did. That was like that was like middle of the summer in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh my I can gosh! Tell you, you Sixty-five know? degrees yeah, exactly. down here means you break out the parkas, the, ah. the scarves, the North Face. Guys are go guys are wearing gloves and scarves. Uh, Coach, and I, I saw space heaters this weekend. I no, saw space heaters. No, really? Sixty-five degrees. Yeah. But I, I guess when you have nineties all year, no your, your blood does thin a little bit. You I know? Would, I would I would trade those it's science. and keep them just to have all the rest of the days that we get here in South yeah, Florida. Yeah, and I think winter is over already should get up <laughs> close to 80 today it did start at 61 all right so there's your weather report for yeah. for the weekend uh let's talk odu for a moment because sure. again it's been a couple of weeks and, and i want to reference senior day and that game look you're gonna have games over the course of the season where you win but they're anything but pretty and i think sure. that was one of those games you found a way to win uh, especially and a, a great thing about it coach a lot of seniors making plays all over napoleon sure. had nearly 100 yards james threw for 220 olin had the game ceiling pick it was really neat to see that i tell you what our seniors you know, AJ, they have done a really, really good job. They've performed well and played well on Saturdays. We've had guys nicked up. Anthony Jones has missed some plays. And, yeah. and James Morgan missed a game when he got his knee injury early in the season. Uh, but they've all kind of tried to bounce back. Unfortunately, you know, we lose Maurice Alexander that was a, you know, a big blow yeah, to the team, not only from a wide receiver and leadership standpoint, punt return, a lot of the things that he does on special teams. But uh, but that day was good because I think our, our team really, truly wanted to send those seniors out with a, with a victory. Yeah, and it was, it was neat to see 
you know, that, that was the fourth straight win at home. You know, the guys closed at home really well, and so many families were able sure. to make the trip. And, and you've got guys on this team, and it's the final time I'll reference it, whether they're transfers or, or Juco, Juco guys into the program, Power 5, they've been here through the ups and downs. I mean, you could sense how special that was yeah. for them to have their families there yeah. and, and send out their final game at Ricardo I Silva with the win. it's always really nice on, on senior day. You know, uh, sometimes during football seasons, there's always – games and moments that that you have memories for the rest of your life yeah. obviously the last game of your season whether it's a bowl game uh, a senior day a homecoming day those are things that you actually will remember you know 10 to 25 years from now yeah. and to see the parents come there and know that you know hey my son came division one football he played he's been in a good program Absolutely. we've had winning seasons and to see how much that they love their their, their sons that's really special important and and the the uh, the next time I see all those parents at yeah. the time, I want to see them all crying because I want to, their sons are going to walk across the stage and get that diploma. Absolutely. Because as of right now, we have 18 seniors, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, four of them are already in grad school, okay? Uh, in, in December, we're going to have another nine of them are going to graduate, and yeah. the others will graduate in May. So this track. will be the yeah. first season. We've had uh, 39 out of 41 seniors the previous two years. This will be the first year that we have a chance for all 18 to graduate oh. so that's really pretty cool that's outstanding yep. coach and i tell you what I, you alluded to it there was the sense in the area you know, no matter what had happened the previous week you know it was it was bigger than that yeah. you know it was about where the, where the program sure. is where they've taken it and, and being able to you know potentially make a bowl game for a third consecutive year and they're already gone back to back years which is pretty pretty nice legacy yep. here in the history of the program all right so moving forward mm -hmm. to this weekend all right the side of the former orange bowl all right that's been well chronicled the particular point of pride at FIU, the Nugget, we're the program that actually sent the Orange Bowl out with the victory. You rewind back to 2007. Let's take a look at it. What a game it was for Paul McCall. We're going to the way back machine here. Three touchdowns, 228 yards. Lionel Singleton had an 84-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. That was the third and final of his career on senior night. That was a tough season for the Blue and Gold, but it sent the Panthers in the Orange Bowl out on a high note, 38-19 was the final score. You know, a prerequisite for athletic endeavor, uh, particularly through adversarial stretches, is it's a healthy dose of optimism, right? Well, Paul McCall had quite a quip after that game. He said, you know, we're not 1-11. We're on a one-game win streak. <laughs> it kind I love of set, his attitude. Yeah, it That's set the good. tone for the rest. I mean, they ended up making back-to-back sure. bowl games under Mario. So you talk about one-game win streaks. Coach, if we get on a one-game win streak, we're going to be going bowling. But before we talk about that or any uh, implications of the next mm -hmm. two games, your past against Miami has been well chronicled. It's not so much that anymore, but it is a return to the Orange Bowl. Does sure. it have any significance to you? You know what? I, obviously, the, you know, spending 11 years in the old Orange Bowl and stuff, there were some unbelievable memories of great games and great opportunities and uh, my first head coaching opportunity in 1995. Uh, but when you, you know, the drive to that location hasn't changed. No, whole, it hasn't. It <laughs> hasn't changed a whole heck of a lot. But once you obviously, once you get off of 836 and you drive into the neighborhood, uh, uh, it totally has changed. I mean, yeah. the facility there, the Marlins Park, is is a beautiful facility, and uh, and I hope that this is going to be a great environment. Um, I went to, and I, I shared this with you earlier, that I went to the last time that uh, I was there for a football game yeah. was was the Miami Beach Bowl Little games there, and yeah. uh, and and I thought that that was unbelievable. I was I wasn't covering the game for ESPN, but I was working for ESPN, and I went down there and watched the game, and I thought it was packed, it was loud. Uh, they do a great job of setting it up for a uh, you know for a football game. Last week we went in there and we practiced in the stadium uh, on Thursday to kind of get the familiarity get the of the it, locker yeah. room where you go and how the field's going to be laid out and everything. And I think. It's going to be a great environment. Yeah, and certainly for those bowl games, they ended up having pretty nice atmosphere sure. for those games. So now you put two South Florida, two 305 teams in that environment. It should be a nice celebration of the sports sure. in, in South Florida and a pretty – I think it's going to be pretty close to filter to capacity. I Absolutely. think what Pete was saying last week at the yeah. ballpark. So it should be a pretty good environment. All right, we're not going to harp on what happened in Boca Raton, but just to address some things as sure. we move forward. In your mind, when you looked at the tape, uh, Napoleon had that great run, yep. the longest since 2010 sure. when T.Y. Went, went against Troy. But I know you want to see more out of the ground game moving forward well, and just taking care of the football, yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. taking care of the football is a big thing. Yeah. And obviously one of the things that you know, has been detrimental to this football team this season is the self-inflicted things that we've done, whether it's been offensively or on special teams, sure. whether it's been missed field goals, uh, punt 
punts that have been blocked or dropped and, and uh, you know, then offensively turnovers and things like that. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to beat good football teams and you want to be a good football team, you cannot self-inflict yourself to, you know, because nobody, I mean, there's very few teams in the, in the entire country that can go out there and do a lot of bad things and still win the game. Yeah. So uh, you just got to play. You got to prepare. You got to have good practices, and that's kind of wh what the mindset is with our team right now. Yeah, no doubt. We're getting we were getting away for, for it with a little bit that tough stretch going into the locker room, the, the missed field goal, the interception yeah. that hurt a little bit of momentum. Oh, but we were yeah. six inches away from going in 14 to 13. Yeah, James made a great throw, and yeah, Austin fade, made a yeah. great adjustment on the first and 10 play down in the end zone. And I mean, he really truly had a a decent chance to try to catch it, but it was a little bit of an overthrow. Then we don't, you know, we don't yeah. get the touchdown, and then we miss the field goal. We sure. don't get a chance to kick it. And uh, so that, you know, obviously that's not a positive way to, to end yeah. the first half. Well, win or lose, next play, got to move forward. And this weekend, Miami is up for us at Marlins Park as we take a break here on Panther Talk Live, presented by Geico. A reminder, Panther Talk is also presented by Florida Lumber. For more than 50 years, Florida Lumber has been servicing homeowners, contractors, and handymen. For more information, Head to FloridaLumber.com. All right, when we come back, we preview the Miami Hurricanes and their season. Billy the Marler and Rory, you know, they're getting excited for this week. It should be a lot of fun. Coach throwing darts last week at Marlins no Park. Look at that spiral, yeah. documented spiral. Back after this. USA way. Watch us be competitive, unique, strong, and athletic. We're driven. We're passionate. We're champions. This is the CUSA way. All right, we welcome you back to FIU. Another beautiful day. We've persevered through the cold fronts. <laughs> back to our typical <laughs> regularly sc pr scheduled weather here uh, in the 305. Welcome you back to the GC. AJ Ricketts alongside Butch Davis. All right, let's take a look at what UM has accomplished up to this point in the season, where they're at, what they've done, and what we're up against against Manny Diaz and the Hurricanes. You look at Miami's schedule this season, four losses for UM, and really all those losses have come by one score, of course, the kickoff classic in Orlando had a chance to win it late. So they had some special teams issues this season. Bubba Baxa had a chance to tie it against North Carolina late. That was after a late defensive lapse. And then Virginia Tech had a chance to take the lead, the joint field goal, and then Tech ended up scoring in the final moments of the fourth quarter. A lot of close, tough losses. Recently, the Canes have been playing much better football. With, found a way to win at Pitt with under two minutes left to play. The transfer from Buffalo, K.J. Osborne, took care of business at Florida State, had some explosive plays in the second half to wrap that one up, and then most recently, perhaps maybe coached their most complete game of the season uh, against Louisville. The offense looked as uh, in form as it has up to this point. So when you take a look at 
what UM has accomplished up to this point, what you see on tape. They're a team that, you know, very well could have won any one of those four losses sure. and a very talented program up against this weekend. Absolutely, yeah. AJ. And one of the things, when you start watching the film, obviously they have a lot of talented football players in all three phases of the game. Uh, you know, they've kind of caught on fire here offensively, explosive plays, yeah. big plays down the field with the wide receivers, got really, really good running backs. Uh, defensively, one of the things that they've been really good and solid over the last couple of years is the ability to put pressure on quarterbacks, create turnovers. Obviously, the, uh, you know, that's one of the things. Their defensive line is very athletic. Yeah. They're very explosive at the point of attack. And so, you know, anytime, you know, that you play Miami, you've got to be prepared for all of the explosive uh athletes yeah. that they're going to have, uh, punt returners and kick returners. You just look at over the last decade, they've always had guys that have been able to change the field position there. So, you know, to win a game like this, sure. you've got to play really well in all three phases. You can't just go out there and say, well, we're going to outscore them or we're going to go out there and shut them down. you got to play really good, solid football, be really good yeah. in the fundamentals, and uh, that'll give you the best chance to win the game. I mentioned their close losses this season. They've also had a couple of close wins. Coach, they found a way to win ball games when mm -hmm. they've scored 17, 17, and 16 right. this year. That's Central Michigan, UVA, uh, and then most recently Pitt. Uh, that's 16 to 12 win. Shows you the strength of their defense. Sure. Uh, at, at times this year, they've struggled. Manny Diaz ended up playing a bigger part of the defense, but they've been finding ways to win with their defense. And guys like Greg Rousseau, who sure. had five tackles for loss against Florida State, really going to have to keep an eye on their D line yeah. and their veteran linebackers. Yeah, you could definitely see the athletic ability, you know, as recent against FSU. I mean, yeah. it was totally different. That's not the FSU program that people have looked at over the last two years. Yeah. They were, you know, Miami's defensive line dominated the offensive line at FSU. I mean, they were in the backfield, negatives, tackles for losses, pressures on the quarterback, and yeah, sacks. So, you know, you've got to do a really good job with their defensive line, or you're going to have a hard day. Last season, we weren't quite sure who we would see under center uh, mm -hmm. for the Hurricanes between uh, Nikozi Perry ended up playing uh, that game and had a good start to, to his season. This year, I think we're pretty confident we're going to see Jaron Williams under center after he threw a school record six touchdown sure. passes. What have you seen on film that's allowed him to be successful since he came back against yeah. Pitt in that final drive. Well, he's got a good arm. I mean, yeah. that's the first thing. You don't throw six touchdowns no. with a, without a guy that can throw <laughs> no, the football he can really sling well. Yeah. But he's, he's throwing to very, very talented players. And one of the things that's really good about any offense is if they are – two-dimensional if, if, if because they have really good talented running backs if they have the ability to run the RPOs that get you to have to try to defend the run then it opens up spaces for the wide receivers to be able to make plays and the play action stuff and uh, the quarterback does a really really good job of keeping his eyes down the field yeah gonna be interesting to yep. see the matchups this weekend if we can contain the explosive plays and Jaron Williams as well who seems to have really found the rhythm mm -hmm. uh, at this point of the season all right we'll head to a break here uh, look at this car from Homestead yes Yesterday. Yeah, uh, I was rooting that. for this guy, Garrett Smithley. <laughs> what a beautiful vehicle, uh, Coach. Uh, that's <laughs> absolutely unbelievable. It's a gorgeous car. Yeah. And for them to help support our football program, 100%. Uh, they're really, really great guys. Yeah, the last time uh, the race will be at Homestead for the championship. Shout out KSDT for supporting no the good. FIU in the blue and gold with that race car, Garrett Smithley and company. We're back after this to take questions and more. is indeed the language of love. This one, she likes you. She likes your La Lechonera, my friend. La Lechonera is the spark of love. Your spark of love is powerful. Powerful indeed, my friend. La Lechonera, the original Mojo Criollo, obey the pig. founded on the side of an airport, reaching new heights, it's in our DNA. And since then, we've dedicated ourselves to solving the big problems facing our community and the world. We believe that crazy startup idea isn't so crazy, that families without health care shouldn't have to go it alone. We believe we can be better prepared for the next hurricane, and that our coral reefs can be saved. And that's because, above all else, we believe in you. For 25 years, Conference USA student athletes have done things the only way that we know how, the CUSA way. 
In that quarter of a century, we've learned a thing or two about winning, both on and off the field. Our student athletes are more than just great athletes. They're fantastic students and they're outstanding citizens who give back to their communities. We're committed to excellence. We are stronger together. That's the CUSA way. All right, we welcome you back to Panther Talk Live at the GC. Appreciate you joining us on a Monday morning here at FIU. Beautiful day in 305. It's time to take a couple of your Twitter questions here. First from our, one of our regular contributors, Eddie Hondal. Thanks for uh, bringing in another question here. He's wondering about, I guess, the role of the freshman moving forward. Sure. He says, Coach, since we only have two games left, three, of course, if we qualify for a bowl, we, you plan to see more of the freshman class or others being redshirted to kind of throw a wrinkle into the game game day plan? We don't want to go into game day strategy or, yeah. or give anything away, but the role of the freshman, I guess, yeah. moving forward in your mind. You, you know what? Every every freshman class, AJ, comes in and, you, and you know, they all hope that they're going to play or significantly yeah. play. If we have a lot of depth in certain positions, it's probably best for them to redshirt, learn how to practice, yeah. get bigger, faster, stronger in the off-season conditioning program, but then – during the course of the season as the injuries occur, which they have this season. For an example, yeah. Maurice Alexander gets hurt. So Nate Jefferson, who we had planned on probably trying to redshirt him, now he's coming in. He's getting a chance to play in these last four games. Uh, 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 Sione Fion, yeah. the All offensive the guard, yeah. now has played over the last three or four games because we have absolutely had more injuries in the offensive line than I've ever seen in a season. We've had a lot of guys that have missed games, missed practices, so he's playing along. You know, so some of those guys, if they have great roles and they can help you win games, yeah. it's, it, it, you know, stick them in absolutely. and let them, let them try to help. Uh, but as you build the program, we had a lot of freshmen who played in 2017, not quite as many in 2018 yeah. and a lot less in 2019 because as you build the program, then you get older, more mature guys down the line. In 2020, 21, 22, you should have guys that are not playing a lot of freshmen. You're yeah. playing a lot of sophomores, juniors, Great and point. seniors. Yeah, you build yep. that depth, and it's, it's not so much a necessity exactly. uh, moving forward now, of course, uh, year three of the program. Right, we had another, uh, another fella uh, tweet in, and I don't want to – say his name because honestly I don't know if it'd be a compliance viola <laughs> a violation but he's an high school athlete he said coach what what we asked yeah. any questions for coach he said well, what does it take to play at FIU and mm -hmm. I think he's actually wondering you know like physical tributes sure. are looking for speed what he wants the 40 but you know we're going to make that a more overarching sure. thing you know what are you looking for in a recruit when, yeah. when you recruit here to, to That's FIU? That's a good question yeah. AJ yeah. that a lot of kids ask those kind of questions when they come to camp and there's two different categories. There's the one that's the physical attributes. I mean, like how, you know, I don't know what positions that they play, but we kind of have some standards for offensive linemen, yeah. defensive linemen, corners. A lot of it has to do with speed and athleticism. But then when you get out of the athletic aspect of it, then you're looking for guys that are unbelievably competitive. They love to play. They love yeah. to compete. Uh, you know, they're guys that are passionate about the sport. They're guys that, uh, you know, are hungry to try to learn. And, they, and, and they're all in. They, they make great teammates and kids that really truly want to get a great education yeah. they want to graduate because uh, one of these days whether it's at 22 or whether it's at 32 football is going to come to an end and for a lot of kids that play it in high school uh, their last year of football is going to be their senior year in high school it's 14 and, for me so yeah, exactly. <laughs> so but I mean that's you know you're looking for kids we actually look for kids this is kind of an interesting thing yeah. with the NFL draft uh, this past year one of the things that came out in a USA Today article and it talked about like the the first round draft choices over the last five years is like 90 percent of those kids yeah. were multi-sport athletes Absolutely. a lot of times yeah. parents think well i'm just going to stick my son in one sport and that's all he's going to do but here in football you're looking for kids that play basketball they wrestle they run track they play baseball they multiple sports because they love to compete yeah. they want to be out there they like to be around a winning culture so that's one of the things that i actually look for is our guys multiple athletes i feel like our signing day show uh back in february where every guy was, you know, three-sport letterman, sure. you know, track, yeah. you know, basketball. Absolutely. <laughs> Had some versatility yeah. to them. Yeah. And, and the one thing about it is, is yeah. that they don't, they're not as physically mature maybe as kids that just do one sport. Yeah. 
but the upside is enormous because now all of a sudden once they just spend all that time in the football program now you see guys that come in at 223 225 pounds and two years later they're 265 and now they're run they're still running in the high four sixes yeah. and the low four sevens you take that athletic ability that hasn't Absolutely. really been worked on as much but that ceiling is high Absolutely. and you can do some special things when you get the coaches in the program uh, around them as well all right we're starting to wrap things up here uh, i want to bring up a topic i saw uh, on the website the other day as the son of a a guy who was a pilot in the Navy. My mm -hmm. uncle was in the Navy as well, and you come from a military background right. too. Uh, this story came out last week uh, on FIUsports.com. Coach, 2012, right. you, get the, you get the honor of speaking to nearly 6,000 sailors. This was the hat during senior day at ODU, the USS Enterprise. You got the opportunity to speak to those sailors before they went overseas, and just tell us about this story, because yeah. it's a really uh, neat, uh, neat that, story. Oh, AJ, it was an unbelievable, and in that picture right there is uh, John Tyson, uh, CEO and president and owner of uh, Tyson's Food. He and I and four other people got a chance to go on the USS Enterprise and they had a mock war out in the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. So we had dinner in Norfolk with the Admiral. We flew out, landed on the aircraft carrier. We spent uh, four nights there. Wow. And during the course of the entire day, they gave us the opportunity to watch every single aspect uh, that takes place on an aircraft carrier, whether it's how to make missiles for the for the jets, how they land at midnight, yeah. and doing uh, sorties and they're flying and they're doing uh, battles. It was a mock war, and so there was other countries like Australia Australia and England and France that were playing the enemy out there and uh, we actually got attacked had a had a, uh, a pretend uh, torpedo to hit the ship and let me just tell you, you something. played a role in this <laughs> what 6,000 people and from a football perspective yeah. you know how hard it is to get 11 people to do the right thing uh -huh, yeah. how about trying to get 6,000 people <laughs> within about 20 seconds get out of bed stop doing whatever they're doing and defend the ship yeah. shut things down uh, you know, jets flying off and all kinds of things. And so it was a, it was an unbelievable deal. And then getting a chance during the course of the days to go around to different departments yeah. and talk to young Americans, kids that were 18, 19 to 23 years old, I, you're blown away at how impressive the youth of America can it's be. Great. Doing yeah. computers and sitting in in uh, planning uh, attacks, uh, I, I just was blown away. I got off that ship and I said, you know what, America is in great yeah, shape because good. we yeah. got we got a lot of great people in the military, and it was an honor to be there. And it's so meaningful for you, coming from that military background. Yep. Your wife has had family in the yep. military, and I know that hits home when you have an experience yeah, like my, that. My yeah. father was in the Navy, yeah. and he had two brothers that were in the Navy. One of his older brothers was actually in World War II and was in a ship that sunk and he lost his life. And uh, then my wife's uncle and her brother were both in the Navy. So uh, it was an unbelievable opportunity yeah. to do it. And it's one of the greatest memories that I'll have in my life. Yeah, well, i tell you what, one of my favorite things to do growing up in <laughs> Panhandle, Pensacola, it's Naval Air Station oh. where the National Museum of Naval Aviation, you just walk around and kind of soak in the history Absolutely. And, and, and those who have fought to protect it. So again, we were off for Veterans Day, but uh, I want to tell everyone a big thank you for all those who have fought to protect our freedoms yep. uh, and defend our country. And Coach certainly had a pretty cool story from 2012 <laughs> to tell about that. You left out the part where you got you got like a, a certificate oh. for, for – can you tell that – Can you? I'm not yeah. going to let you off the hook uh, here. Okay. Okay. So, so, like I said, it's yeah. a mock war. Yeah. Okay, so I'm up with the Admiral sitting on top, and I'm looking out, and they've got all these guys. they got binoculars. Yep, they survey, got, they yep. got radar. they got all these kind of things. And I tapped on the Admiral and said, is that a periscope over there? And he goes, huh, huh, what, what? And so yeah. guys started looking, and they go, it was undetected <laughs> until I saw it. And it was, it, yeah, it was an enemy You're submarine. right, Coach. <laughs> so that night at dinner, they do a newspaper on the ship, yeah. and they did a cartoon, and it's like a Viking ship, yeah. and it's got some – little idiot Viking guy <laughs> poking at the head guy and saying, hey, I think is that a periscope? And they, were, they were making fun of the, of the people that were supposed yeah. to have detected I'm, that. I'm surprised they didn't hand you a Navy uniform no, after that. They <laughs> gave me a certificate. It was fine. It was fine. <laughs> like, That's fine. That'll, it was that'll cool. work for me. Uh, Coach, we have a, uh, we have a special uh, message for you here before we go. Um, well, uh, let's play that. Let's play that special message. Here we go. Bush Davis, man, to the Bush Davis era, man. Bush Davis, 22, man. Shout out to Bush, 22, baby. Okay, uh, like greetings it. for Coach. We've got it. We've got a cupcake for you. Ah. Very nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. He already blew my candle Happy out. birthday, Coach. Thank you very much. <laughs> we Thank we you. hope you had a great birthday. I did. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the cupcake.
It looks excellent. Happy sure. birthday, Coach. Thanks for joining us on Panther Talk. Let's try to beat the Hurricanes this weekend. We'll see you next week. Thank you.